I've just started my career. And this is, this is something that I wish someone had told me when I was younger. If you said to me that at 44 years old, that you will be starting your career, everything else leading up to it is steps. And obviously there are chapters in your book that lead you, you know, to this amazing chapter. But I cannot believe that I'm now really embarking on my true career. You're listening to Elevate, the official podcast of Elite Agent for real estate industry sales professionals, property managers and leaders. We are proud to present Courageous Conversations, a podcast series focusing on the tough decisions people have made to put themselves on a pathway to success. This episode is brought to you by Connect Now, who makes the business of moving easier for both you and your clients. For more information, visit connectnow.com.au. Please welcome your host, Leanne Pilkington. Hey everyone, Leanne Pilkington for the latest edition of Courageous Conversations. And with me today, I have the lovely Emma Brown Garrett. Emma, how are you? I'm so well. Thank you so much for having me, Leanne. Oh, I've been so looking forward to this. So you and I have known each other since um, I watched you win the Novice Auctioneers competition. How long ago was that? So I it was 2017 and I got to the final. Oh, you won Did the heat, you? sorry. My you apologies, the final, you won the heat. I won the heat. Um, but I, I got to the final and actually we, I was only talking about it with Pamela the other day about how gorgeous it was in the Justice and Police Museum. Yeah. And we had the final in the city. It was really lovely. So yeah. that was our first, that was the first time that you and I, I think, kind of got to know each other a bit and realised that we liked each other. I think that was our first kind of interaction. <laughs> exactly. It was, it was. And so what year was that? 2017. 2017. Okay, so it's not that long yep. ago. So not you were ago. not um, you were not new to real estate though. So you had had a resident no. career projects career. Tell us a little bit about um, your earlier career. So I actually started. It, it's been 20 years in real estate, and I started taking names and numbers on doors. There's my very first, very first real estate kind of interaction, and I remember being very enamored by some of the sales girls, you know, great shoes, great cars, and, you know, high heels. Some of them you look yeah. so glamorous. I remember the same <laughs> thing when I started at Lang and Simmons 27 years ago. Some of them were so glamorous. Yeah, but as a young girl, as a young girl, and I thought, you know, I could really do that, you know, so I thought I think I might give this a shot. And I remember I was working for Earl Kramer, um, for Kramer Property Project Marketing, and I was very young and very naive and I had no experience and, he really, not, not that he wasn't taking me seriously, but I was really wanting, I really, this is what I wanted. And he was like, no, no, he kept palming off. So I decided that I needed to get his attention and I um, bought a jar of Keen's mustard powder. Right. And I wrote a little hand note and I left it on his desk and I said, Earl Kramer, I am keen. Please give me a sales job. Oh, that's he cheesy. Called, <laughs> he called me. He called me the next day, and I was in. I got it. I went from taking names and numbers. I did my certificate of registration, and then I found myself sitting there, um, and of course, assisting and doing the project, opening up the you know the developments on Saturdays and Sundays. And that was my first kind of introduction. And there, it just kind of snowballed into a little bit of leasing, um, and then moving around. And I I've sticked a lot with. Um, with family businesses and some boutique agencies. I'd never worked for a larger brand. I always kind of seem to um, migrate and be attracted to these smaller family businesses. I suppose you'd say, yeah, independent. Um, and so I kind of jumped around from businesses and then um, never really, always, you know, sales and leasing and, and doing bits and pieces here and there and trying different things. But as you know, I didn't really come alive in my career and really know what I wanted to do until I found auctioning. That was. But that was you wanted thing. to be an auctioneer from the, so the what, five years that I've known you, you've been passionate Correct. about becoming an auctioneer and you've kind of, forgive me for saying it, but it feels like you've had a few false starts. Talk yes. to me about that whole experience. Cause I can only imagine it would be massively frustrating. It's very difficult when you want something and I'm pretty confident. And so no. I know if I, can you believe it? I know you wouldn't know. If I, if I put my mind to something, I know that I can achieve it. And so I really set my mind on it. And I thought, this is what I want to do. But it's, it's, it's catch 22. You need the experience to get the work and you need the work to get the experience. And so I struggled for a long time with getting runs on the board and, you know, wanting people to hire me based on the fact that I hadn't had any auctions. 
and that's where the novice comes in, right? I mean, that's a right. big step up entering the competition and, you know, showing yourself. But I think one of the hardest things was I was so keen to get my start and I and I really wanted it to happen. Um, it's very frustrating and, and it makes it worse because you're so desperate for it to start. So, yeah, tough. But, um, but now that I'm here, it doesn't really seem as bad as it was. But in the moment when all you want to do is co- go out on a Saturday and call auctions and there's none for you to call, it's very frustrating. Yes, no, I do. I remember talking to you about it a few times and obviously COVID hit, bloody COVID, um, and so uh-huh. that kind of ruined everything. I uh, know that made it um, almost impossible, right? Because even the auctioneers had to, the experienced auctioneers had to massively pivot um, to go online. So that's not going to be the time that a new auctioneer gets an opportunity, right? No, I actually decided um, I took a role at Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate, which okay. Charles Tarby had bought from the US and had decided to launch it here. And I took a role as their head auctioneer. And so obviously the BDMs working crazy to build the business and and uh, open offices. And unfortunately it didn't take off um, in the way that I think the business would have liked to have grown. And then of course COVID hit. So um, I felt really, really defeated actually. I, I wondered whether or not it was the right thing for me to continue to do. And during COVID, I decided that I would take a break. And I, uh, I started a public speaking brand, uh, a public speaking brand for women. Um, I've got a website. I've got it all sitting there, all pinned. I thought, you know what? I love this. And if, 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 I, if no one's going to give me it, I'm going to have to try and do it myself. And so, you know, a, a brand for uh, auctioneers and, and marriage celebrants and public speakers and MCs, a place where you could go to have a really elite person for your for your event. Um, and so I kind of started this business and then lo and behold, Mr. Clarence White called me and said, I don't think that you should give this up. I think that you should consider um, continuing. And, um, you know, where we are today with me working at Mink White, uh, I think he really made me realise that if you if you want something, you shouldn't really give it up. And so he brought my passion back into, into why I really wanted to do to become an auctioneer. And how amazing is it to have somebody who is behind you with that unconditional support, right? Tell us the difference that's made. I've worked in a lot of offices. Yep. Um, I've worked for a lot of different people and not just in real estate. I have a, a whole different path I've taken, whether it's hospitality, modelling, singing, dancing. There's a lot of things I've done in my life and hands down, I can say that, you know, the, the team at Mink White and how much Clarence White has backed me and given me an opportunity has, it, it's life-changing. I mean, I just needed somebody to, I suppose, see my potential and maybe harness it and and um, and show me the ropes a little bit and put me on the right path. And when somebody thinks you're great, you start to feel pretty great. So it's pretty amazing. I can certainly vouch for that from my own experience. I would not be where I am today without um, the support and mentorship from um, Tony Anderson and Rob Farrell, um, who owned Lang and Simmons from about 1997. So there's no way in the world I believe that I would have um, been able to get here without that support from them. So you can't really underestimate it for yourself, but also once you get into a position of leadership, you can't underestimate how you can change somebody else's life as well. I felt like a lot for a long time I was searching for a mentor. Yeah. I would often use the word mentor um, in the office with some of the people that I worked with and trained with. And a lot of people don't know what to do with that word. A lot of people become frightened. They get a little bit scared. Some people get threatened. Um, and I, I was so desperate for somebody to take me under their wing and train me. And I had some fantastic training in the beginning from Josh Larson and we work together really closely. And if it wasn't for him, um, I wouldn't have got my foundation of auctioneering. I mean, he trained me for the novice and, you know, we were so excited when I had the opportunity to go through to the finals. Yeah. And I, I, I was searching for someone who I didn't know what they were. I didn't know who they were. I didn't know what they wanted to be. For a long time, I was searching for a female mentor, um, someone who was just like me, aligned with me, um, same beliefs and and all that and not easy it, to find it, though I mean I have to be honest just in recent months 
there's been a number of new um, female leaders emerge in the real estate space, which is just incredible. Um, you know, Katrina Tarrant, CEO at Harcourts New South Wales. Amazing. And ACB, um, Charlotte Pascoe is a CEO and just bought into um, Stockdale and Lego down um, in, in Melbourne and a number of others. So it's just all of a sudden there seems to be uh, lots more women coming to the fore. But that's only been in the last couple of years. And I've got some, um, I've actually got some views on that that I'll share at another time. Um, <laughs> but um, <laughs> but before that, it was pretty hard to find somebody who's going to be able to mentor you in the way you wanted to be mentored. I think sometimes you don't know what you need either. I think sure. a, a good mentor will see things in you that you don't see in yourself and maybe guide you in a different path that you probably wouldn't have taken. But this is this is my first time really in real estate where I've had somebody who is helping me in every step of the way, decisions I make in my business, language and dialogue with my clients, um, obviously my call. You know, we, we train non-negotiable at Men Quiet, we train every week, non-negotiable. Amazing. And I mean, Clarence is one of the best, um, one of the best auctioneers, not just in the country, but, um, you know, you guys have just been in New Zealand um, competing as well, which is very exciting. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so to think that he, he is still training every week, I think is a lesson to all of us, right? Clarence made it very clear to me when, when we first started working together that, you know, in order for you to be the best, you have to be better than everyone else. And, you know, you have to really work hard and train hard. And, um, you know, I, 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 I don't even feel like I train enough. You know, I think that I could train much more than I do, but we get together as a group and we train every week. And what a difference it makes for my call on a Saturday. And I'm not just talking about numbers. I'm not just talking about working on your preamble. I'm talking about scenarios with vendors. I'm talking yeah. about you know, the right documentation that you have, authority to bid. There's all these different scenarios that happen. Because most of the agents don't, well, I won't say most, a lot of the agents <laughs> don't have, the. they don't know, right? They don't know how to read a contract. They probably. don't. And this is another thing that I think also when somebody asks you about what you do and as your role as an auctioneer, one of my greatest strengths is all of those years in real estate. Yeah, of course. And being able to navigate a situation of sales. And, I mean, how many auctions I've done in my own sales career um i think definitely turning up on auction day and being that fear of authority that an agent can look towards and ask for advice i mean that's what we do and so when i talk about when we train that's what we train for we we, we go through a lot of scenarios and we run a lot of stuff that is helpful for saturdays so we're there for the agents right i mean that that's what we that's who we work for that's what you're there for yeah absolutely yeah. now you've got kids tell me about your kids I've got two gorgeous little monkeys. Um, I have my firstborn is Harland. He is 11 years old. And then I have a little girl, Ginger, and she is six, just about to turn seven. Oh, and gorgeous. Yeah. They're divine. And there's a large gap between, which was on purpose for all the for all the listeners out there. I couldn't take doing two back to back. So oh, my sister-in-law always says, I'm not a believer in frantic mothering, Leanne. And so she had gaps between her. Yeah. Absolutely not. I ref Fused. It was it was imperative that my older child could make a snack for me while I was breastfeeding. So <laughs> I decided that that was a nice mix. But um, I enjoy being a mum. I really do. How do you manage? Being... How do you manage to balance all of those things? So I'm fortunate now that um, obviously working in working as an auctioneer, I do have the days available. I mean, I do work nights, and we call auctions in the evening, and I work all weekend as well. But motherhood for me. There's a lot that comes before motherhood. Um, I'm pretty adamant about my career being successful and I always put myself first in so many situations. Yes, the kids are always cared for and yes, I'm a great mum, but I think you can lose sight of yourself as a mother and I think it's really important that you, you know, you, you have to be happy. You're the one that takes care of everyone. If you're not happy and if you're not striving and, and you're not successful in what you want to do, everything kind of falls down. So... Um, I manage it pretty well. I, I'm I definitely, I'm pretty hands-on. I do, I mean, they annoy me, let's let's face it, but they're, it they're right. gorgeous. And I'm I'm very, I'm very happy. Um, I'm very happy the way that they're growing up. To be honest with you, Leanne, I love them getting older. I do not like babies that much. I I struggle with that constant care, but now they're becoming these little humans. I mean, they're divine. We have great conversations. They have thoughts. They have opinions. Yeah. And they say some really funny things. Oh, I was so, going to say, yeah, they would make you laugh. I know my uh, eight-year-old. I'll tell you something else that I've really loved. 
I love them watching me grow in my career and become a businesswoman. Yeah. And it's very, it, we talk about it a lot around the house. We talk about how much dad and I work and what we do for a living. Both, at, both of my kids can tell you exactly what their mum does and exactly what their dad does. And I, I, I like that. We have a very strong work ethic in the house. And, you know, I hope that one day Ginger comes and works for me, you know, so I, I would love, I just love that whole mum works, dad works. And in life, if you want to succeed and you want to do well at something, you have to work. So that's something that we're really big on in the house. Yeah, that's fantastic. So what's next for you? Oh, what's next? Well, you know, the funniest thing is, Leanne, I just feel like I finished my apprenticeship. I mean, I've just started my career. And this is this is something that I wish that someone had told me when I was younger. If you said to me that at 44 years old that you will be starting your career, everything else leading up to it is steps. And obviously there are chapters in your book that lead you, you know, to this amazing chapter. But I cannot believe that I'm now really embarking on my true career. That's such an important thing to talk about for a minute because we do kind of think, particularly as women, by the time we get to 40, it's like, you know, it's it's the downhill no slide. Way. You know, you are on the dark side, my friend. Um, but <laughs> it's um it's not necessarily true, right? You've found everything's led up to this point now and at 44 you're just you can see the enthusiasm absolutely I think one of the things when I do talk to younger women and I meet I mean not just real estate in any business but especially in real estate there is a little bit of patience that has to come from it because you there's so many things you can do in real estate and if you haven't found your niche try it out if you're in property management you want to try sales doesn't work for you and property management works there's, there's lots of things you can do in the property industry. There's so much expectation that you need to have it now. And I suppose that's just part of growing up, isn't it? And just be, it's part of being an adult that once you get a little bit older, you realise that all that experience makes you the woman that you are. You know, all, the, all those jobs that you had, all the people that you met, all the networking you did, all those conversations leads you to become the person you are in business. But I, I, do, I, do, feel, I do feel quite shocked that, it's not taken me this long, but I feel so happy now at this age. You know, we t- we talked about this the other day. What do you think day. is going to happen at this age? I had no idea. I mean, honestly, to be honest with you, I thought that my career would have happened earlier. And I've had many friends around me who have succeeded a lot earlier. And that's very difficult too. Because no, talk you- to me about that for a minute. It is, it's, um, I learned a long time. I've got some very successful friends as well. And I learned that I was never going to be the most successful or the, the the best at anything, whatever the metric was, right? I was never going to be the best in my group. There was always going to be somebody who was better or smarter or faster or richer or, you know, whatever. Nobody's sparklier anymore. Um, <laughs> but I've taken a while yeah, to step into that. I'm officially labelling you, yes, you. Uh, nobody dresses like you do, that's for sure. The best. Good or bad. <laughs> <laughs> for sure but so talk to me about how you how you kind of deal with that because you strike me as quite a driven person maybe a bit competitive as well and so you want to be the best for you how do you deal with that when there's other people succeeding where you're fine starting to find your feet when you're younger it becomes a little bit of envy and a little bit of disappointment that you're not there at the same place as your friends when it's when you're older, you start to then support your friends. And when you see your friends doing well, you celebrate their success. When as you're younger, you're so kind of self, self-obsessed and a bit of self-absorbed. You think, why is that not happening oh, to me? Yeah. What am I doing wrong? What what is it that I need to do? Why can't I be at that level? Yeah. But when you get older and some of my girlfriends who are very successful businesswomen, I just I just praise them. Yeah, absolutely. You know, but definitely I I've, I've come to terms now with the fact that my success is now coming later in my life. So I think um I mean I haven't even reached the point where I even feel like I've got there yet, but then I also challenge myself to think maybe Leanne, maybe I won't. Maybe I'm ambitious and I just think that, you know, you're always striving. And so do you ever get to that point of feeling like you've got there? No, well, I don't know where there is. And I don't know who they are either. You know what I mean? Um, and yeah. so for me, um, the definition of success is very personal. So everybody's idea of success is completely different, right? 
Um, and so for me, success is not, it's more freedom and it's more a joy of more, being happy to get out of bed and do what you do every day, right? That's success. I agree. And I've always been like that. My husband and I talk about this a lot. Um, I haven't really found that feeling of success. For a long time, I thought that um, I should feel successful after the birth of my children, and I didn't. And this is a big thing. This is a huge thing. I would say to my husband, there's so much more that I want. And, you know, I love them and they're gorgeous. And But I don't look at them sometimes and think they're my greatest success. And I've struggled with this a lot. And it's almost like um, you're searching for something. Whereas I look at them and I think, you know, they're beautiful and they're amazing. And, and I made them. And yes, they're a, you know, I'm successful for having them. But I think there's so much more that I want to achieve. And so it's a fine line success. Who knows where it is? Yeah, who knows? Um, do you fear um, people judging you because you have, you are prepared to verbalise that concept around your kids? Leanne, I talk about this all the time. I am so open with conversations, especially with working mums, that you don't, you, it's okay to say that your kids are driving you crazy. And actually, it's I often I often download to Clarence who doesn't have children, and uh, you know I say, God, you must be so tired of me telling you how annoying my kids can be sometimes. And he's like, No, it's good, you know. He goes, I I don't have any. I've made the choice. <laughs> so he's the smart one. But I we don't need to always talk about how wonderful everything is. I mean, it's very very hard. It's one of the hardest jobs I've ever had. It is a twenty four hour a day job. And there's lots of other things that I want to be doing with my time, but you have to be there for the kids. But it's okay to say that it's not that great. Good on you. <laughs> it's not Good that fun. You. I um, You'd be surprised at people, how many people still ask me why I don't have children. And I, my standard line is if I had a wife, I would have children, but I am the wife, so that was never going to work for me. But I, when I meet people that don't have children, I say, okay, so you're one of the smart ones. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and, and I mean, people, can you imagine what people think of me as a mother saying that? I yeah. mean, you know, but I, but I do, there is something I do want to stress around having children and marriage and everything. I never really wanted to have children and I never really wanted to get married. And then I met my husband, Cameron, and I wanted to marry him and I wanted to have his children. Nice. And so there's a big difference, I think, of yearning for something and that maternal instinct that that some women have and some women don't. But it just kind of happened for me. And maybe that's why I'm a little bit more open about saying it's very difficult. Um, there's times where I just don't want to do it. I mean, you know, the, the, the daily slog of, of the feeding and the caring and the nurturing, I mean, it gets pretty boring after a while. I can imagine know? that there are going to be people listening or watching this going, oh, yes, she's <laughs> so right. I'm so glad it. she said that. I mean, you know, this, uh, there's times where I say I've changed my mind. <laughs> I've changed my <laughs> mind, everybody. I've, I've changed my mind. I'm done. I don't think I can do this anymore. Can I please opt out? <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I'm out of here. I love it. I'm out of here. <laughs> I mean, even the kids, you know, the funniest thing about it is I'm so open about it with language in the house that the kids are like, mom, you can't say that. <laughs> oh, I love that. That's awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> anyway, I do talk very openly about it. So um, yeah. if anybody out there, you'd like to talk to me about it, please feel free to give me a call more than happy. <laughs> how annoying your children can be <laughs> exactly you found your person right here exactly what is something that you're really proud of and I normally have to preface it with um, something that you have done it's not about your children or your partner but I clearly don't have to do that with you um, so <laughs> what is um what is something that you're really proud of I love that you um phrase it like that because one of the things that I don't like in real estate is when we talk about our why if I have to listen to another person say their family, I just, there are so many other things that can be your why. Yeah. I mean, you know, for me, one of my whys is buying the most fabulous pairs of shoes. I mean, I work really hard. You know, I love my shoes. Everybody knows I love my shoes. Yeah. But one of the things that I'm, that I'm most proud of really is that I seem to, looking back on myself, I seem to have, the ability to just keep going and push myself and I'm quite good at pushing myself out of my comfort zone 
even though it's horrendous at times. Um, and we talked about competing. Yeah, let's just go to that for a second because um, you come across as very confident um, and public speaking, obviously, you know, as an actress, you've done, you've done training and all of that sort of stuff. Doesn't mean that there is stuff that you struggle and you really have to push yourself to do, right? Absolutely. One thing I've learned um, in the last couple of years uh, is when we do train and we go to auction competitions, competing is a very different thing than public speaking, hosting an event, learning lines for a script. It's very different. And there is an energy that comes with you. Clarence and I just returned from New Zealand last week. We competed in the LVD auctioneering competition um, in Queenstown. Now, one thing that I have to work on is I have the most enormous amount of energy before I compete. And it's a very different energy from performance. It's all, uh, when you go and do it, any other type of performance, whether it be emceeing or speaking or whatever, the, the competing energy is so intense that you don't really know what to do with it. And one of the things that Clarence and I are now training on is learning how to take all that energy and put it somewhere before you, before you go on stage. And so, I mean, just recently last week, I could, I literally burst through the doors when it was my turn to come on and start my auction. And I ran onto the stage with my arms in the air, like I was running onto a football field and I didn't know what to do with any of that energy. So there's lots of things that I'm, I'm working on with that, but it's quite terrifying. The, competi the competitions are quite terrifying. Oh, they would be. But I'm proud of myself. That's one thing I'm actually really proud of is there are not a lot of people that step up to compete in auctioneering. Particularly women. It's very unusual to have a woman. Uh, last year I was the only woman that competed, as you know. Yeah. I want more women to compete because I want, I want someone to share it with me. I mean, yes, I love the boys and it's great, but, you know, I'm so proud of myself for stepping up and doing it because it is painful at times and it is terrifying, but... The adrenaline rush when you're finished and you did an excellent job and you did a great call and you didn't drop too many numbers <laughs> and and your and your peers and the fraternity, the auction fraternity, pat you on the back for stepping up. That's one of the things that I'm the most I'm most proud of at the moment, to be honest with you. Good for you. That's awesome. Absolutely. And it's recent too. I love that. It's yes. all, you know, very uh I know with me, I used to say, I'm really proud that I went back to university and get, got my MBA. And then I went, you know what, Leanne, get over yourself. That was decades ago. Like, move and on. You've, done so, you've done so many amazing things to be proud of since then, right? Thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. I have. But you've just got to, you know, you've got to remember, okay, yeah. Okay, so you worked hard and push, push yourself 15 years ago. Now what? <laughs> like, you know, it's got to be something. What's next? What's yeah, exactly. next? It has been an absolute joy, as usual, to catch up. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you so much for having me. I mean, it's just so incredible to be part of what you're doing. And I feel more connected now to the real estate industry in these last couple of years than I ever had with all of those years. And I'm so looking forward to my journey now with yes. all of my fraternity in real estate. Because so you found your place. You. And that's a I found thing. my spot. Thanks for having me. All right. See you later. Bye. Bye. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Courageous Conversations with thanks to connectnow.com.au. Don't forget to get access to all of Elite Agency's premium resources, including a detailed episode guide for this podcast. Visit joineliteagent.com.